in the headlines. Free train passenger receives hero's welcome in Kevin State. Eight die in Plateau Road accident. A hundreds attend Maulud celebration in Kaduna. And lastly, on the forums, in deadly Russian missile attack hits Ukraine's Zaporizhia city. Hello and welcome to the news updates on Trust Television. I am Martia Umar. Thank you for joining and now on the news in detail. The return of Usman Oguchus, one of the three 23 remaining train passengers to Berning Kebi, created a frenzied atmosphere with many residents coming to celebrate his release. Gujus, an official of the National Union of Road Transport Workers, was abducted alongside others who bought the Abuja Kaduna train on March 28. They were released on Wednesday, October 5. A relatives and well-wishers came out to Kofar Kola in Berninkabi to give a hero's welcome to Gujus. Meanwhile, the federal government says no cover was paid for the release of 23 kidnapped passengers early abducted in the ill-fated Abuja Kaduna train attack on March 28, 2022. Addressing a news conference in Abuja, the Minister of Transportation, Wazu Sambo, said the release of passengers have already been reunited with their families after proper medical checkups and examination. The minister, who expressed his happiness with the release of the victims, explained that the target of the government was to get the victims out safely without the payment of ransom. He added that there are plans for the resumption of train services on the Abuja Kaduna route. Eight persons have died while two others sustained injuries following an auto crash in Plateau State on Saturday. The State Public Enlightenment Officer of the Federal Road Safety Corps, Peter Longsang, confirmed the death of the crash victims to the punch in Jazz on Sunday. According to him, the road traffic crash occurred along Jaws Lamink Road on Saturday afternoon around 3.10 p.m. The crash involved two vehicles, a Toyota Hayas bus and a Honda Pilot Jeep. number of people involved was 10, all on board, out of which eight died and three adults and four uh, adult females were involved, as well as a child, while two others sustained injury. The Anambra State Governor Professor Chukuma Charles Soludo has sympathized with the families of persons involved in both a mishap that occurred in Umunakwa community in Ogbaru local government area. It was gathered that tens of people are still unaccounted for in the unfortunate incident. Though search is still ongoing, however, report has it that the boat occupants were on their way to Umkwo Ogbakuba when it capsized by Omona Umkwo Usomala Bridge and over 10 persons drowned. While regretting the unfortunate incident, Governor Soludo further stated that several interventions have been sent by government to various IDP camps within the state. He assured that government will continue to do its best to reduce the negative effects of the flawed disaster just as it called for a permanent solution to its yearly occurrence. And over 300 Islamic schools joined the celebration of Eid al Mawlud at Ahmadu Ballo Stadium, Kaduna, to commemorate the birth of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Politicians from within and outside Kaduna, including former governor of Kanu State, Rabi Kwankwaso, also attended the event. Ballo Musa reports that some Christian faithful also joined the celebration. The event commenced with prayers seeking Allah's protection against calamities that have overwhelmed the nation. Sheikh Samail Medewani and Jain Muslim to emulate the exemplary life of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. A celebration at 
Medibelle Stadium attracted thousands of faithful. Pastor Johanna Buru, a Christian cleric who attends the Maulud, emphasized the need to promote peaceful coexistence among the adherents of various religions. I do celebrate uh, Christmas for over a decade. I can assure you that not only hundreds sometimes, but even thousands of Muslims turn to the church to celebrate Christmas with me, the birth of Jesus Christ. So what is the evil behind me coming with team of pastors to also return the good that the Muslims do come for over a decade coming to the church celebrate Christmas with me? The message of Muslim Ulma is to learn what Prophet Sallallahu bring to us. And what he brings to us is in our Holy Quran. Let everybody learn what Prophet brings to us from Almighty Allah in the Holy Quran. From our governor of Kano State, Rabi Konkoso, and other politicians from within and outside Kaduna also address the annual Maulud. I want to add all of you to ensure that the Lord of God is in terms of what is going on. It's wish everyone that is here are uh, uh, very a very good regard and warm regard. I'm also to, go, to congratulate not only people that are here to congratulate the entire Muslim of the world because Maulud is an Arabic language. Birthday is an English language. This is the birthday of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam at which every Muslim celebrates, at which every Muslim cannot quantify the happiness how we are feeling today. Since the beginning of month of Rebula Awal, the third in the Islamic calendar, Muslims engage in organizing Maulid at different places, celebrating the birthday of Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him. Bella Musa, Trust TV News Kaduna. All the way from the Eidal Maulud celebrations, police in Kasana have rescued a victim of human trafficking in Daura, local government area of the state. Uh, the victims are from Undo, Lagos, Edo, and Kaduna states. The victims were on a journey to Libya and route Daura, Congolum border with Niger Republic. Based on credible intelligence, the police raided the victims' hideout in Dora and rescued them unharmed. What I'm trying to say here is uh, it is an offense. Human trafficking is an offense against the laws of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Anybody that is traveling uh, to any of uh, uh, foreign countries must follow the due process, apply. Uh, uh, for a visa, get a traveling passport, and ensure that um, uh, uh, you are not going to be trafficked uh, to go and uh, be made either to go and commit uh, yourself into the hands of uh, traffickers who at the end of the day, they may likely uh, uh, put their lives in a very serious risk. The police said that the victims were conveyed from Kano to Daura by a driver who took to his heels on noticing the presence of police operatives. Police authorities advised citizens to be vigilant about the company, their children, and what keep to ensure their moral upbringing is not compromised. The victims say they were deceived by some people who promised them white color jobs in Libya and Europe. Uh, the Ura Congolan border remains one of the major routes used by human traffickers to Libya and other European countries in recent times. Abdullahi Ismayamadi, Coast Television News, Kazana.
announced a health matters. The Environmental Health Council of Nigeria wants a review of public health laws in Nigeria to stop spread of preventable diseases. Registrar and Chief Executive Officer of the Council, Dr. Yakubo Baba, made the call during an interview at the Media Trust Group office in Abuja. Trust TV's Fatima Musa reports that Baba also believes that ending open defecation by 2025 is achievable with synergy among three key ministries of water resources, health and environment. The report. The Chief Executive Officer, Dr. Yakubu Baba, said the mandate of the Council is to regulate issues of sanitation, food hygiene, premises inspection, hospitals, hotel services, international regulation, disease control and surveillance, abattoir and many more. He calls for review of public health law to provide stiffer fines for breaching basic sanitation requirements. The mandate of the council has been expanded to regulate the 21 component that made up what we call environmental health as defined by the World Health Organization. So the council is there to regulate the 21 components of environmental health on all its ramifications. On ending open defecation by the year 2025, Dr. Baba said signing Executive Order 9 by President Mohammed Buhari will enable them achieve the target the government has the political will to end open defecation by 2025. And the president has gone ahead to issue order number nine. But what is required is the implementation or to bring out the roadmap, the roadmap how we can be able to achieve the open defecation as targeted by the president. Mm. And this required integration and collaboration of the key player ministries. The registrar opposed the government's rollback malaria policy, saying the country can eliminate malaria by first attacking the vector rather than spending monies to buy mosquito nets. What we need to look into is the Federal Ministry of Environment should be given adequate form to do what we call integrated pest management. When we say integrated pest management, it means to apply all the strategy, all the methodology of controlling drastically the number of mosquitoes in Nigeria. He said environmental health components have been neglected over time and there is need to bring back the sanitary inspectors to address the environmental issues like flooding within states and local government areas. Fatima Musa, Trust TV News, Abuja. And now to Benue State where power supply in some communities has witnessed an improvement in recent times. Residents of this community spoke with Trust TV's Jimmy Azande on the development or elated and want the status quo either maintained or improved upon. The report. Most of the residents of Makudi District Capital are civil and public servants, smallholder business owners and farmers. They are happy that the life situation has improved. I can say there's a lot of improvement. Let's see from the voltage rates now. The voltage rate is so high and they don't take the light as often as then. Like uh, this uh, rain season, we have improvement by giving us steady light. An increment uh, on the tariff, which is actually not their fault because they've been stable light, so tariff has to increase. And I will also talk to their customers to try and make sure they pay their bills. Although they say there may be more to the power supply than meets the eye, they are calling for consolidation and improvement in service delivery. But immediately we enter the rain season now. We are, we are not seeing it normal as we're supposed to see it. Uh, at times, the transformer will cut us off, but the light will be on. So we don't have light. Like now I'm talking to you, now we don't have light. Some of the residents appealed to the Joss Electricity Distributing Company 
to address complaints about exorbitant fees, which they say are not sustainable within the context of the present economic situation. There is a lot of improvement, but the charges are high. So if they can adjust it, we'll be very happy. Uh, they should try and do something because even if they live their life stable like that, and still yet, if we don't have business, if our work is it, not moving well, and the light is stable, and we cannot erase that money to pay our, our bills, it's still not helping matters. So the best thing for them to do, at least, let them reduce it. Well, that of payment, we can say it has gone beyond 100% increment, to the best of my knowledge. Because uh, a unit now will pay as from 30, 35, or 4 thousands. A tour around the metropolitan environment shows that the use of generators has reduced due to improved power supply in the state. You're watching Trust TV News updates coming up shortly. We'll take a look at the story of a physically challenged core member. Details of this story and more after the break. Stay with us. TV, documenting the Nigerian story. Welcome back. You're still watching the news updates on Trust Television. Before we proceed, a recap of our headlines. We told you that freed train passenger receives hero's welcome in Kevin State and a die in plateau road accident. And moving on, a consultant pediatric neurologist at Obafemi Awolowo University Teaching Hospital, Oluatosi Oloru Muteni, says general cerebral palsy rather is preventable if pregnant women guard against it in the unborn children. At the World Cerebral Palsy Day celebration in Ilefe, Oloru Moteni highlighted ways to prevent cerebral palsy in children and urged people to stop discrimination and show love and care to affected children. Hamido Yigbade files in this report as presented in our studio. These are parents and relatives of children affected by cerebral palsy. The agony was boldly written on their faces, but they struggled to smile with tears. Cerebral palsy is a group of disorders that hinders muscle movement and coordination, affecting a person's ability to move and maintain balance and posture. As part of activities commemorating World Cerebral Palsy Day celebration 2022, the Cerebral Palsy Multidisciplinary Team at Obafemi Awolowo University Teaching Hospitals Complex in Ilaife gathered stakeholders to reflect, learn, and celebrate with affected children. To cater for only a child with cerebral palsy is not his doctor's of two. So what, what I can say in summary is that it's God that has been helping me. It's not easy. You know, as, as I've said earlier, that it got to a point that I'm wishing that maybe God should take them from me because the stress, the pain, the shame is too much. But I just keep on encouraging myself and thank God for some people around me, maybe pastor, my husband, 
encourage him. I just hope that one day God will still bring out message. At a point, I I became fed up. I wanted to give up, but then I summoned the courage to educate people that this uh, cerebral palsy is not a disease. It's just a certain condition that our child will overcome. Dr. Oluwa Tosun. Aloro Moteni, a consultant pediatric neurologist at Obafemi Owolowo University Chin Hospital in Leife, appealed to people to show love and support to children affected by cerebral palsy as she advised parents on measures to guard against the condition. It's a preventable condition largely because most of the causes, especially in our environment, are preventable. You know, I said it's usually from uh, injury to the injury according to the brain, actually about the time of delivery. That's the most common um, way it occurs in our environment. And um, men, most of the time it occurs when the delivery is not well monitored or pregnancy is not well um, taken care of. So it's important that mothers who are pregnant should register their um, pregnancy early in antenatal clinic and have the pregnancy monitored early so that even if there are prenatal causes they can be identified and the delivery should be in the government approved um, center or hospital. At the event, children with cerebral palsy defied the limitation of their disorders as they dance in thanksgiving given to God for being alive. The theme for the 2022 edition is Millions of Reasons. A physically challenged National Youth Service School member serving in Bainway State, Peter Ware, has distributed 50 wheelchairs to those who need them in Makudi. The report. The core member described the gesture as a modest contribution to those who share similar conditions with him but do not have the means to get one. The donation is a community development service, CDS project for the core member who served with the Independent National Electoral Commission in Makodi. Being motivated by the challenges I face uh, while interacting with the environment, I always have uh, difficulty and challenges while trying to assess, uh, assess uh, uh, the infrastructure around which has in a way affected my functionality and I feel that others out there too are also facing the same challenges by the fact that they, they are impaired and they could not afford to go out and source for money by themselves and, accept, uh, and uh, have access to these uh, wheelchair devices. I go out, out to look for a way on how I do and uh, touch the life. That's why I've constructed the wheelchair workways and I also provide the uh, mobility devices to help those that don't have it their disability as an opportunity for development. They shouldn't look at their own, uh, leave their self to be pitied by anybody. They should make their self very useful to the society such that the society will stand to benefit even with their disability. One of the beneficiaries, Henrik Bechu, who appreciated the gesture from one of them, said he was elected, as a wheelchair would be a plus to his business. Tend to my daily activities, especially as a physically challenged person, it will enable me to attend to my bus daily business. The NYC State Coordinator for Benway State, Abe Dankaro, while commissioning the Wilfrias, appreciated the effort of Peter Gui and called on the government to complement it by doing more to help those in need. Yeah, to the benefit of humanity and people with special talent in our midst, I wish to commission this round. The project conceived by Peter Gui was funded by Beauty Gate Handicapped People Center Joss. The House of Representatives have promised to punish government ministries, departments, and agencies that deliberately absent themselves for the 2023 budget defense. Chairman House Committee on Media and Public Affairs Benjamin Kalu said this on Friday after the budget presentation by President Mohamed Buhari to the joint session of the National Assembly. He said all committees of the House of Representatives at the National Assembly will conduct a 2023 budget defense session for the MDAs and the full glare of the public. Carlo further disclosed that any difference in statistics observed between figures from the executive and legislature 
shall be harmonized before the final passage of the budget. Well, we are expecting that the heads of the MDA, M M M MDAs, who are not higher, uh, more superior to Mr. President, to come themselves. And like Mr. President presented his budget, they should come and present theirs and take questions, if any. So, and um, honestly speaking, um, because of how the nation is at the moment and the need to have a thorough budget that will reflect our realities, um, it's not going to be taken lightly with any, any, any agency that delays the working of this calendar, the budget calendar. And such people will be reported by the leadership of the House to Mr. President. And you know what that means. Uh, and also, we can also invoke our powers to make sure that we, we bring them in as allowed by the Constitution. So we're going to be very strict about attendance, and this is the message out there. They're expected to attend, and that's on time as well. No excuses at all. And on the foreign scene, at least 17 people have been killed in overnight Russian missile attacks and the recurring in city of Zaporizhia. According to Ukrainian officials in the latest attack at that President Volodymyr Zelensky called absolute evil after night a missile attack on Zaporizhia, at least 20 houses and about 80 multi-story buildings were damaged. 17 people died as of now. And Toli Kotev, secretary of Zaporizhia City Council, wrote on Telegram on Sunday. The attack came after an explosion on Saturday caused the partial collapse of bridge linking the Crimean Peninsula with Russia, damaging an important supply artery for the Kremlin's faltering war effort in southern Ukraine and hitting a symbol of Russian power in the region. At least 14 people died in a Russian missile attack on an apartment building in Zaporizhia on Thursday, while 30 people were killed last week when a convoy of civilian cars was shelled in an attack blamed on Russia. And finally, in sports, at least 17 people have been killed. Okay, we'll move on to sport news where uh, the unbeaten Fernando Martinez made a successful first defense of his IBF Superfly weight world title with a unanimous decision over former champion Joan Ancayas. Argentina's Martinez had taken the Filipinos' crown in February and underlined his dominance in the rematch in Carson, California. Judges scored the fight 119 to 109. 118 to 110 and 118 to 110 for Martinez. And that brings us to the end of the news update at this hour. For more updates, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us across all our social media platforms. I am Martia Umar. Thank you for watching.